When Doom was released in 1993, it created huge waves within the video game industry. Everyone wanted a piece of the action, and many platform holders were desperate to see Doom release on their consoles. But it wasn't just home console manufacturers who were keen to see Doom on their platforms, even the large tech giants were taking note. In 1994, Microsoft was deep into development on its upcoming Windows 95 platform. This would see the introduction of DirectX, the gaming API that would allow Windows to become a true gaming powerhouse. One problem though, the game that everyone in the world was talking about and playing in their offices wasn't playable via Windows. Doom was developed with DOS in mind and Windows was left out in the cold. With Microsoft keen to usurp DOS as the PC gaming destination, this had to change. It's long been rumoured that Microsoft was considering buying out its software and bringing the developer under its umbrella. It's kind of funny how that one worked out in the long term. So keen was Microsoft to make Doom a part of its Windows ecosystem that they were even showing off builds of Doom using DirectX internally. It even led to this video of Bill Gates showing up in Doom to talk about the virtues of DirectX. Yeah, yeah. Don't interrupt me. The end result of this was a version of Doom specifically crafted to work on Windows 95 PCs. This whole thing began life as WinDoom. This was a version of Doom that was being created to work on Windows 3.11 operating system, headed up by eventual Valve founder Gabe Newell. Ultimately this was never fully completed, with Microsoft opting instead to create Doom 95, the Windows 95 client to run Doom. With all that history out of the way, let's talk about Doom 95 itself. When you boot up Doom 95, you're greeted with this client, which is very unlike what you'd experience in the DOS version of Doom. The client is designed to automatically detect iWads, so if you have the retail versions of Doom up to this point, you can click them and you can pretty much go into the games as you please here. You can also load in custom WAD data using the browse function here. As long as you point it to the WAD file you want, you can play that through the Doom client here. You also choose your difficulty from the skill level selection menu here. Perhaps the most interesting aspect is that you can choose which level you want to load into. So you don't even need to play through all of the games to see all the levels. You can just jump to wherever you want. And this works for all the games. You can also take out all the monsters, spawn in fast monsters, or even respawn monsters. It's quite in depth for the time here, and definitely something we didn't see in the official clients for the longest time. You could also set up various multiplayer type games over here. The client would detect games on local networks and list them down below there. If we head over to the advanced tab here, you can see various options related to save game data and also demo recording, which is pretty nifty because that wasn't the most easy thing to find in the original Doom client. But also noteworthy at the top here is the screen resolution here. You can actually double up the original resolution and you can make the game windowed if you choose to do so. It's all very different and all very customizable, which is great for people who want to experience Doom in different ways. So what kind of experience do you get in Doom 95? The answer is a pretty solid experience for the time. There are various things we'll talk about as the video moves on, but the first thing you'll probably notice is that the sounds are slightly lower pitched than you'd hear in the original DOS version. I'll let you listen to that for a second here. Another thing you may have noticed as you're watching this is that things are a bit flatter in this version because of the way that DirectX renders Doom to true 4x3, a lot of the monsters end up looking a bit shorter. But perhaps the most interesting thing I can show you right this second is when you try to finish Thy Flesh Consumed here, if you go through the exit portal, instead of showing you the screen you'd expect to see at intermission, you end up seeing the episode one, Knee Deep in the Dead intermission screen, which is pretty interesting, one has to say. 
You'll also have noticed that the size of the weapon that Doom Guy is pointing and the hood at the bottom are slightly different. Like the hood seems to be slightly more stretched and thinner while the weapon itself is slightly bigger. I'm going to dive in here just a bit and show you how the different screen resolutions affect how this game looks. So this is the 320 by 200 screen resolution option. This is the 320 by 240 option. You can see things aren't as squished here, but the weapon sprite doesn't clear the hood, which leads to this really interesting perspective. This here is the 640 by 400 option, and you can see that things are once again not squished. And this is the 640x480 resolution. The main thing here is that Doom is still very playable when you're experiencing it through Doom 95. What I wanted to do now is take Doom 95 and put it against some of the other ways that you can experience Doom. This includes the DOS box version of Doom as well as various other source ports that I have to hand. This is in no way a deep dive comparison between all of these versions, it's just a way for me to show how Doom 95 stacks up in terms of aesthetic and also showcase just how it handles its music playback compared to other source ports of classic Doom. Doom 95 very much stacks up against all the other source ports and looks, plays and feels very much like Doom, even if I'm not a fan of the music in it myself. I feel Doom 95 does a solid job of recreating the Doom experience, even if it does introduce some imperfections into the game. One of the more noteworthy examples of this is how spectres are handled in this version of Doom. Because of an issue with how DirectX talks to old graphics cards, sometimes you'd see spectres light up like Christmas trees. I wasn't able to recreate this on my modern hardware, however this footage from Invalidation X145 showcases the glitch as I remember it and it is pretty spectacular to see. And that just about wraps up all the stuff I want to talk about with Doom 95. If you want to experience this in the modern times, there's two options available to you. If you want to get your hands on the original client, you can either download it from online, there's plenty of places to get it from, or you can buy the Doom Collection. This was a compilation package that brought together Doom, Doom 2 and Final Doom. It makes use of a slightly updated Doom 95 client, but it's pretty much the same thing. Doom 95 does not work on modern Windows operating systems, so you will have to do some tech wizardry in order to make that happen. There are various walkthroughs on YouTube and on the Doom Wiki. You can also download the Doom 95 Portable Collection, which has been helpfully updated to work on modern Windows platforms. For a lot of PC gamers, this was their introduction to classic Doom. Of course, in the years after this, many other source ports would start popping up and would enhance the Doom experience no end. But for the time, and for the ease of access, Doom 95 served its purpose and helped to bring Doom to many, many more PC gamers. It's a fascinating page in the history of Doom and I just wanted to cover it in this video because it's a way that I experienced Doom for many, many years. Let me know in the comments if you experienced Doom this way. Did you ever play Doom 95 and did you enjoy it? Let me know and thank you so much for watching.